You have a talk titled, Using Data for Evil. So without naming names, what are some examples of data gone awry that you've seen? So we pulled out uh, a couple pretty famous examples, actually, from the past year in the talk. And there, there were some really interesting ones. Uh, so for example, New York uh, released a taxi cab data set at uh, end of 2013. You might have heard about it. Um, so they released a data set of every taxi journey that happened uh, in the city, start point, end point, uh, what time it happened at and what the fare was. Um, that sounded fairly innocuous and obviously the, the authority that released it felt it was okay to release. Um, but there were then lots of people showed great examples of how you could de-anonymize that and actually figure out um, all sorts of uh, much more controversial things. So like if you had a photograph of a uh, celebrity getting into a taxi cab, you could cross match that to the timestamp and figure out where they went in their cab. That's maybe interesting if you were trying to stalk them or trying to stalk some other <laughs> right. person. Um, they tried doing things like finding strip clubs and saying, well, where, when taxi cabs pick people up from outside strip clubs at 3 a.m., where do they go to? And that's probably their home addresses. So there are all sorts of accidental things you can do in, in just in releasing data, not even analyzing it that closely. Um, so our talk was really about the various ways in which things can go awry and just picking up some recent examples to make it real. Right. And so to be fair, situations like that are largely unintentional. The data yeah. scientists didn't set out to, to cause these, these wreaths no, of certainly havoc. Not. Um, so what kind of advice would you give data scientists to help them keep their work on the data for good side of the yeah. line? I, th I think there's a couple things actually. Um, th there's first thinking about things like anonymization. Um, so anonymization is just a lot harder than you might expect um, as, as shown by that taxi cab data set. Uh, but then there are additional things about thinking about the impact of what you do and um, how it may be used, interpreted or misinterpreted. So um, one of the other examples that we talked about is um, Bayesian statistics. So there's this odd phenomenon of, of Bayesian stats where even if you have a very accurate test for some rare event, um, however good the test, if the event is extremely rare, the false positives will be very high, effectively. Um, so there's this example of um, te Bayesian terrorists. You, you can look it up, so a few people have worked out the numbers where, because terrorists are presumably very rare, however accurate your test, your stats test is never going to be uh, pick up all the right guys, or even if it does pick up all the right guys, it will also pick up thousands upon thousands of innocent people. And that's something that only makes sense if you understand the stats, so that the data scientist has the responsibility to explain that those nuances when they're doing modeling and when they're presenting those models to decision makers, who then in turn have a lot of influence over people's lives. So it's really just about using your influence in a positive way, but also making sure that you help other people to understand how your work works. Right, right. Uh, at Mastodon C, where mm -hmm. you work, you work with a, a variety of companies and groups. What are some of yeah. the interesting applications of data that you've seen recently? So we've recently been getting very into city and, and physical environment data, so things about buildings or transport or, and so forth in, in the real world, <laughs> real world yeah. such as it is. Um, and th those applications are particularly interesting, I think, because they can really change the environments that people are in or, or really um, optimize the physical world um, in a way that's not always possible online. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work with uh, a large engineering firm just w and with their customers looking at ways of using data to make the physical environment smarter and, and more, more pleasant, hopefully, for, for the people in it. Those, those are really exciting and it's obviously much more possible now because of the explosion of cheap sensors and, and IoT technologies. So yeah, interesting time in, in, in that side of data, I think. Oh, it is, definitely. What are some examples of some things you've implemented in that area? So one simple example is uh, we run a tracking system for uh, as an organization called Energy Savings Trust who want to understand how buildings work. Um, so they, they're tasked with helping to make, meet the UK's carbon savings targets. One of the blockers to that is understanding how domestic buildings can be made more energy efficient. So we know, for example, insulation make them more energy efficient, bo better boilers, various things you can do. Um, but it's much harder to know how that actually plays out in real weather conditions with real people living in the house. Um, so for example, if you had a drafty house and it became insulated, the physics model tells us that you save a bunch of energy. 
um, the reality tells us that people in a cold house which suddenly becomes well insulated will say, fantastic, I can turn up the thermostat. I've now got a warm house. So we run a, a, tr a system which tracks lots of different test buildings for EST to try and say, how, how do real changes play out in real environments with real people and using detailed data, so detailed time series of data to, to really get into the nuance of that, which in turn will then help them make decisions which can scale up to the whole country better. Right, that's interesting. Yeah. And so what kinds of trends are you seeing in the data space? So in terms of tools, types of companies gathering data, types of data being gathered, anything, anything interesting? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> interesting at the moment. And some things that were initially, I, I think, more of a big deal are, are now commoditized, so treated as business as usual. So things like, um, I think use, the use of cloud and the use of things like Hadoop are, are pretty normal now um, among enterprises and startups. So I find that now, nowadays we have to make fewer arguments for why, why we would do that, whatever type of client we're working with. And the same with open source, actually, that's increasingly accepted among all constituencies, not just the, the crazy tech people, as, as a good and normal thing to do. Um, so then the frontiers become about things like speed, so you know, things like Spark are very interesting and in increasingly two-speed two uh, analysis architectures, so you've got batch analysis, but also some kind of real-time learning layer is, is, is an intriguing structure and is, is the tools increasingly support implementing that well. Um, visualization is getting really nice, and particularly the D3 libraries and all the offshoots of that um, let you do some beautiful things quite quickly. Um, so yeah, there's, there's still a continuing explosion of, of fun and useful tools. So yeah, it's fun times. Actually, in, within our team, we've, we've had to institute a rule that we're only allowed to use one new technology on each project, just because there's so many toys that we could play with. We have to say, no, let's <laughs> slow so down a bit, yourself. let things consolidate a little before we you know, go on to the next thing. Right, right. And so to close our conversation, I uh -huh. want to put out a broad question. What people and projects are you following? What are you finding personally exciting these days? Oh, that's a good question. Um, th so I'm involved in the data kind movement. Um, so there's a US data kind, there's a U UK data kind, where I'm a trustee. That throws up lots of interesting projects um, because that's lots of data scientists doing pro bono work with charities. So the charity impacts are, are really interesting. So, for example, we did some recent text mining with a children, uh, young people's charity and found lots of interesting patterns there. But also the way that pu that pushes data scientists from different industries and different teams to mix professionally and to, to work together. So you, that's, that's always interesting to me to follow what comes out of those. Um, and then on a, on a more technical bent, I guess, I mean, Spark is, it's a bit of a cliche, but that's that's the technical project that's, that seems to be pushing in interesting directions at the moment, and Spark Streaming and ML Live on top of that look, look like they're going to do really interesting things. Well, excellent. Thank you very much for talking with me. Cool. Thank you.